Hey everybody, this is Jose here. We are about to start. Uh, we are about 25 seconds or so before the session begins. Uh, this is a sound check. Please go ahead and confirm with a quick message in the chat box that you hear my voice. That would be great. So I know we are ready to start. Thank you so much. Nice, so it seems that everything is uh, working perfectly for us to begin the session. So here I am maximizing our presentation slide so we can begin. Very good, wonderful, nice to see you all guys. I, I'm seeing, I'm looking at your names. Very good to see you all uh, here joining me uh, in this uh, different day, isn't it? Today we are meeting on, on Friday where normally we, we run this session on Thursdays, but we have a little change this week, isn't it? So thanks for, for adapt, adapting to that little change. And again, thanks for joining me. Let's begin. Uh, my name is Jose Blasco. Uh, I will be your guide in uh, today's session. And today happens to be July 19, 2019. So we are getting together, uh, as, as you all know. And the purpose for today, <clears throat> the purpose of getting together today, is all about identifying longer term opportunities in the market that we normally exploit using options. And we'll be looking at uh, those trades. Uh, some of those trades will be directional, some of the trade will be non directional. We will see what the market is giving us today and we will gladly take it uh, for sure. Before we take it, we will be uh, assessing uh, probabilities, uh, you know, how. Uh, juicy or not, those trades are likely to be, etc., uh, etc. Et we'll be looking at the risk component, which is key, uh, and, and decide which trades to execute and which, which trades to ignore, okay? Because there are many trades in the market, and of course, we want to take the best quality ones, okay? Before we start, we have a disclaimer as always, so I'll do this quickly. Let's go for it. The following videos, clips, demonstrations are for educational and instructional purposes only. Tradictive provides these videos purely for the purpose of demonstrating a method of using the product users understand that all the content used in this video is purely for demonstration purposes only and is not a guide and does not provide any indication or prediction of actual results. As a user, you understand and agree that the hypothetical results obtained through the demonstration do not indicate in any way the results you may receive on using our products and this takes care of the disclaimer therefore the session is now formally introduced here is our beautiful transition even more beautiful the shiny ufos uh, red and green uh, identifying the on-field orders for us <clears throat> but then it's now time to take those ufos uh, surround them by a set of rules and e execute those trades following those rules where we keep adding probabilities in our favor by using the right tools and the right rules. On top of this, we use the discipline that makes us professional traders, okay? Anyway, um, very good. So I believe we are all ready to start, okay? So uh, feel free, if you have any comment, question, feel free to type on the comment box anytime. Uh, I will be moving at the fastest pace as possible because my intention would be to identify as many trades as possible. At the same time, the least of my intentions is to lose or leave anyone behind. Therefore, if I go too fast, please let me know. If I go too slow, please let me know. And if you have any question, no matter what the question is, please type it and uh, you know i'll take care of it okay everyone very good so let's begin the session uh, today we're gonna start uh, as we always do in the longer term sessions looking at our scanner we have directional opportunities on the top we have non-directional credit opportunities in the bottom part we will begin with the non-directional um, we we have um, recently a few weeks ago we, we went through the process of how to build iron condors in a way that is a little more precise uh, and uh, I would like to look a little bit into that because um, the, the trades that we have planned uh, in, in the prior week, uh, I believe it was the last Thursday, uh, if I am not mistaken, uh, those trades didn't end up working well. And therefore, I would like to go ahead and take a look at those charts, uh, get to understand what happened and talk about what to do in a situation like that. So next time it happens, because it will, uh, we know how to act. Uh, we, we have covered in recent times as well uh, we talked about um, um, uh, damage control mode when a trade works against us and i would like to take advantage of the fact that uh, a couple of the trades that we plan didn't work as per plan to point at uh, what to do in those cases so one of those trades uh, was with goldman sachs so i am loading goldman sachs here 
okay and uh, you probably remember okay here are the lines i got on the chart okay we were doing a non-directional trade and i believe if i am not mistaken that goldman sachs at that at that time was some somewhere around this point okay and we had red ufos we had green ufos we have everything that we needed here okay and we were expecting goldman sachs to remain in this box until two days later and the fact is that goldman sachs remained in that box but not for the full two days because uh, afterwards it broke out of the zone and never came back as you can see it just kept going higher okay so so that was a, a case of a market that was going sideways for a while and finally change the the market condition and from there started moving in a particular direction in a strong fashion and therefore a non-directional trade in this case is never going to work uh, this is actually the, the complete opposite of what you want to happen when you do non-directional trading isn't it so this is what happened in this trade so so this trade unfortunately didn't work well good news is that the most you can lose was predetermined already ahead of time uh, I remember we looked at the reward and the risk of the trade, and it was all fine. Uh, and also, to be honest, I'm gonna I'm gonna end very soon with Goldman Sachs because uh, this was a trade that we executed using two days to expiration. When you execute a trade with only two days to expiration, even though we did talk about damage control, really there is very little damage control you can do because there is no time, right? And when we deal with those credit trades okay uh, whatever you do to take a profit or whatever you do to manage that damage right it's all about uh, working with those credits and for those credits to pay you you need time passing well that's what we didn't have in this trade because we were using a two day to expiration uh, option and therefore this trade simply didn't work and really there was nothing you could do uh, to to fix it okay based on the basic rules of damage control that we have covered up to this point okay because there are other things that we will learn in more advanced damage control sessions where you could have helped a little bit this trade but between us let's face it when a trade moves against you so aggressively breaking out of the range you were expecting so fast well this trade is very likely to end up as a full loss and that's it that's the end of the story okay so uh, again uh, the reward to risk ratio of the trade was reasonable etc but I just wanted to talk about it because this is a trade that happened to us. And therefore, I just wanted, if you have been in this trade, I wanted to comment on it. So maybe you were, you were feeling, oh, did I do something wrong? Should I have done something else? Well, you know, now you have the answer and you know how, you know, how it was. Supply and demand trader, I took it and I, I was happy to take it, the stop out. Uh, it's the cost of doing business. You are correct. And this is the right mindset. Uh, one more time, supply and demand trader. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much for those very wise comments. Uh, but again, um, some uh, of the traders watching this session, either live or recorded, may be in a stage of their trading career where they're still in learning mode and therefore uh, those comments are needed to understand what to do. Okay, So I wanted to give you th that explanation and I love that you uh, kind of rounded my explanation with your comment having been in the trade as well where you know it's not a big deal it's just a loss a part of trading a cost of doing business as you said but at the same time you know it's important for the newer traders to understand that okay you are still in the july 19 bull call that expires today and is close to the target okay very good fantastic good job my friend very very good job so uh, the other trade that we executed uh, that day was also with merck okay so mrk that was another trade that we executed and i want to load the chart because this trade did give us an opportunity to do that much control okay so this trade it was a trade where we executed more or less on the same day i believe it was somewhere here we were in the middle of the range something like that and next thing you know based on probabilities and ufos we were shooting for 80 season 80 80 looking for that particular trade to remain doing whatever is doing but it, we were expecting it to be doing it between the two lines well, it turned out that we had a break of the bottom zone uh, and that at that moment in time could have been seen as problematic. Later on, you can see that the price of that particular stock came back to the, to, to the inside part of the range. So really, that's not problematic. It's, it's perfectly fine. But at the same time, <clears throat> when that happened in the bottom part, you had no guarantee it would come back inside, isn't it? So that's when you apply your damage control, okay? And this is when you would have converted, based on what we learned, you would have converted this iron condor with the 86, 87, 80, 79, you would have converted it, okay? 
uh, into an uh, iron butterfly, okay, collecting the profits from the coal side and rebuilding an iron butterfly around the 80 uh, strike, okay, with um, positive strikes above, okay, in case it goes higher than that, and negative strikes below in case it goes lower than the 80, okay, and therefore you would have reconstructed this trade, uh, which is what we called damage control, and if you don't know what I'm talking about here, um, obviously today is not today for me to explain it, it's recorded, okay, you can, you can always look at the, um, at the YouTube channel, uh, we have, uh, let me bring it for you guys, uh, in the YouTube channel we have uh, a playlist, okay, so here's the playlist in our YouTube channel, okay, and you can look at uh, July 7, Damage Control Part 1, okay, and you would learn how to convert those iron condors into iron butterflies, which is one way to mitigate problems and reduce risk, okay. Um, by the way, um, our YouTube channel, if you don't know, I mean, if you are attending this live, for sure you know, but if you are watching this recorded, you may have found us out of a search. So uh, the URL is youtube.com slash C slash trade with UFOs. Um, please go ahead and subscribe and click on the, on the bell so you get notifications, okay? And also, if you're watching this uh, live or recorded and you happen to like it, please give us the thumbs up. That would be, of course, appreciated. Anyway, I wanted to start the session with a quick comment about those two trades because those are pretty fresh and I know some of you are on those trades. So, you know, um, I just wanted to give you a little feedback, okay? So everything is under control. But anyway, let's begin the day. So I am now uh, pointing at uh, the non-directional trades in the scanner. We got a, collections, uh, a collection of uh, assets here uh, that we could use and uh, we got AABA. Okay, uh, Altaba, we got Amgen, we got, we got Boeing. So we got many, many of those stocks. And you know that normally what I do is I like to start with the ones that are quite liquid, okay? Uh, and uh, that got premium built in by default. Uh, and this is something that you know, apart from what the scanner is doing for us, this is also something you know uh, out of experience. Okay, so PayPal, okay, PayPal is normally a stock that produces options with great level of premium. Okay, so I want to know why is that, and therefore the first thing I need to do is to look at my briefing.com website to look at the earnings date, which happens to be on July 24. Okay, and July 24, uh, it's a problem because it happens to be next Wednesday, so we cannot use uh, July 26, that would be the next natural expiration date. So it's a shame, but that's what it is. PayPal has great level of premiums and meet our rules. It would be nice to be able to do uh, an undirectional trade, but uh, it is not meeting uh, the set of rules that we have. Okay, so what, what, what do we have here? Uh, I'm going to look at Boeing. Okay, I would like to look at Boeing to see what Boeing is providing for us. So BA, actually, I just uh, type it the opposite way, so BA, that would be for Boeing, and we are talking about uh, July 24 as well, okay, so that's uh, not what I wanted to see, what about COP, okay, COP, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm skipping some stocks because I know some are more liquid than others, this is coming from experience, if you are newer to trading, not a big deal, just, just do what I'm doing, uh, and do it manually, and after a few months of doing this, you will remember who is who. So uh, ConocoPhillips, okay, has uh, earnings on the 30. Uh, we can certainly use July 26, okay? And the key will be to find out if ConocoPhillips is providing valid uh, UFOs and a valid setup or not. So with um, a regular session hour data, we got 48%. If I switch to pre and post market, this is giving me 49%, which is a better uh, outcome, okay? Uh, ooh, um, the range is so wide, so, so, so wide. Um, yeah, I'm very concerned I will not get the premium I need. So let's take a look very quickly. So I'm opening a Option Station Pro. Opening Option Station Pro. How are you, Bojan? Good, good to see you. So let me see. We're gonna move into the options chain. Load COP. COP normally also provides good levels of premium. Okay. COP. 
Okay, loading now. So let's see what is the level of premium that we have. So with COP looking at July 26, uh, ooh, uh, no, it's not going to be enough. So if we're looking at uh, 57s, for example, we are being paid 12 cents, which is not enough. Okay, so yeah, so let's keep going. Uh, we just have a problem here, which is the fact that the UFOs are too far away. That's all. Okay, and this is something that we need to respect. So what else that we have that could be a valid candidate? Jaili, uh, Jilid. Um, uh, we could be another uh, valid candidate. I'm always undecided uh, on how to pronounce uh, the name of this company. Um, hopefully, I did a good job. So, July 30, we have the same scenario with uh, this particular company. Uh, so, we got pending data on the upper left. I'm going to wait for this to disappear because, of course, the value I have here for, for my UFOs depends on the amount of data downloaded. So, I need to wait for the whole set of data to be downloaded so you can evalu evaluate if I am going to be using the US stock with pre and post market or move to regular session. Okay, so I'm going to have to wait a little bit to see that. Uh, so the data is being downloaded uh, and uh, it should uh, it should be received in my computer fairly quickly. In the meantime, while I'm waiting for this to happen, I want to keep looking at the list of stocks just in case. So what else do we have here? Uh, yeah, Qualcomm could be another one. Okay, so we got we got G lead. Uh, so forty eight fifty seven. That is with. Uh, pre and post market, if we look at regular session only, that's 54, so that would be much better. So if we do a trade with that particular stock, it would be using um, regular session hours. And if we do that, uh, it seems uh, pretty obvious that those are the UFOs to be used, isn't it? But again, uh, I need to first find out if those are far enough. So what I would do is type GILD. The moment it loads, I would be looking at July 26 because remember the earnings for that stock. Oh, Gilead, thank you so much. Gilead, Gilead, I think I got it now. Thank you so much, Brian. You see, um, I teach you trading, you teach me English. I love it. <laughs> That's a good trade, isn't it? Thanks a lot. I mean, I love languages, uh, but sometimes um, certain things are just difficult to understand from a, uh, from a common sense point of view, uh, all languages have at times funny sounds that uh, make no sense even though they do, they, they, they don't at the same time. And there is only one choice, you have to memorize them, right? Anyway, so what I just did here with uh, Gilead, it's a, I simply inserted a random iron condor, I don't even care which one and why, I just did it for the purpose of being able to add my plus one and minus one standard deviation, so I get the value 69 and I get the value 65, right? So now I can go ahead and evaluate is that if that 69 is good enough. So 69.35 is the top, and here I got 69.43, so I'm not happy with that. I will want my UFO to be, be beyond that level, and in this case, it's not the case, okay? <laughs> Very good. So, uh, so then we're gonna move to the next one, okay? And the next one I would like I would like to assess, okay? I'm gonna look at uh, Southwest Air Airlines. Uh, Qualcomm is another one I would like to check. Um, Rio. In recent times, I see a Rio Tinto. I've seen the the liquidity really go away. Visa liquidity is not amazing, but it's it's worth it to give it a shot, okay? So, so we, we'll we'll look at uh, four more stocks. So we'll start with LUV. Then we will look at the Qualcomm. Uh, and then the Visa. Okay, that's it. I will look at those three. So LUV, Qualcomm, and Visa. I will skip uh, Rio Tinto because, as I said, in recent times, I did notice a very, very big drop of, of liquidity in the options. Um, and uh, in order to not to spend time wasting the time, so I will just skip it, uh, even though I'm, I'm kind of surprised why the liquidity went so 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 away from that that option chain, okay, for that stock. So uh, looking at LUV, so uh, let's look at earnings LUV. So earnings would be happening on the 25. So I cannot use LUV on the 25. Um, 26 is the earnings, right? So Qualcomm then would be my next choice based on the list. Uh, Qualcomm would be 31, so Qualcomm is a valid candidate, okay? So we will look at Qualcomm. 
look at the performance of the UFOs, look at if we need to use pre and post market or only regular session hours. Okay, so it's taking a little bit of time for TreStation to download because I did launch on purpose multiple downloads in parallel. So when everything is ready, then everything will be ready, but it's taking a little bit of time to get all the data from, from the TreStation network. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to look at Visa. So we, we know Qualcomm got earnings happening on the 31st. Okay, so I'll look at Visa, which is V. Visa is on the 23, so we cannot use Visa. Okay, so our only candidate left with for a non-directional trade is Qualcomm. Qualcomm that is giving us 55% when looking at regular session hours and when looking at pre and post market, we are now looking at instead of 55%, it's going to be, come on, come on. Uh, you can certainly see that being located in Asia, even though I have a massive uh, bandwidth on my internet connection, uh, you can see how the TreStation network creates a lot more latency. And for basic things such as downloading uh, market data for a chart is taking a lot longer for me being in Asia than what is probably taking to you if you're in Europe or in the US. Um, so sometimes you will see this happen to me, which is when I happen to clean my cache folder and I don't have the data on my hard drive and TreStation has to redownload the whole thing. And uh, again, just because uh, the main uh, servers of TreStation are located in the US side, I happen to be uh, far away from a latency point of view, even though uh, the data I'm requesting is not that much but it's taking a little bit of time. Let me take a look at, it's just a little too long. So let me take a look at the download scheduler. Yeah, so Qualcomm is downloading here. So let me let me cancel it. Okay, and I'm gonna switch back to daily time frame and then switch back to 55. Yes, exactly, this accelerated the process. So this is giving me 54, 58. If I look at pre and post mark, sorry, if I look at regular session, instead of 54, 58, it's giving me uh, 55 okay so it's it's about the same in in, in that particular stock is there is not a massive difference okay so you know uh, let's go for it i may i may switch back and forth between the two to see what gives me uh, the best um ufos okay so what i'm going to do is first load qualcomm so this is what i'm doing now so please wait is loading qualcomm the option chain will be um zeroed uh, at this moment in time uh, 10, 10, mar 10 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes to, to the market open. Uh, most brokers will. Oh, I got a timeout issue. Let me reload. 10 to 20 minutes before the open, most brokers will uh, reset the option chain. Here we go. So I got it. So it's all zero. Okay. But this, even though it's all zero, doesn't stop me from right click, analyze and sell an iron condor. Okay. And I'm just picking anything random just so I have the opportunity, as I said before, to add plus one standard deviation and add minus one standard deviation. So now I, you know, once, once the market data uh, begins loading, uh, TreStation will be able to calculate what the value is because right now, as you can see, the three values are the same 7445 just because uh, to be able to calculate that data, a uh, trade station needs the options to not to be zero. Okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna have to wait uh, seven minutes for this to happen. Okay. So in other words, uh, markets to watch Qualcomm from a non-directional point of view. So I will come back to this market uh, later on. We're gonna be using either regular uh, hours or pre and post market, both is okay. Okay. So let's park this uh, for a minute. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna move into directional trades and I'm gonna be looking at which stocks could be good candidates for a, for a directional trade. Well, certainly PM, it's a liquid stock with liquid options, Philip Morris. The other ones also meet the rules, but out of those four, uh, Philip Morris is for sure the most liquid one. Okay, so TreStation is now downloading the data. Okay, and let's see what we got. Uh, and to be honest, already with what I see, I'm, I'm not super happy because such a big move in price. It's great because it tells you that that stock is moving strongly up and 
So jumping on board at some point uh, would be great, but the problem is that the place where to jump on board, which is 81.5, is so far down. So you will need to have that stock to drop a lot before it's time for you to get in, okay? So uh, I would like to plan trades that are likely to happen quickly, and therefore um, I would like to go ahead and look at the next one. Um, STZ. And I will also look at um, Ari and Ally, or I should say Ali. That's another uh, good question for English speakers uh, with uh, English as a first language. Um, oh, this one is RA. Okay, that one is easy then. <clears throat> so we got uh, that stock is loading. So, you know, I'm just going to click on uh, RA and also uh, Ali. So everything begins downloading in the background with TreStation. So when we get the data, uh, we'll, we'll be ready, okay? So, uh, yeah. So anyway, the, you know, I, I almost don't need to look at the chart on the bottom left because I have programmed what I need in that chart in the scanner, okay? I, I, the scanner is looking for stocks that closed above the average and stocks with the DMI that confirms the market condition. So it's a confirm market condition okay therefore um given that fact i can basically ignore that okay but you don't want to fully ignore it because we always want to enter at a price which is around the average okay in this case 199 so what we will need to find on the chart on the right it's green ufos around 199 okay and we'll see that the moment the data arrives and we have this uh, loaded on our trust station okay so okay, great. While this is waiting, I'm gonna look at the at the opportunities for shorting. Of course, uh, the one that catches our attention is Netflix. That is for sure a very liquid stock. Okay, the options are have a little bit of a spread, but it's also because the price of the stock is is quite high. We are talking about a $354 stock, uh, which actually went down to $325. Okay, so. Uh, you know, that's, that stock is in a pretty uh, powerful downtrend, okay? And, uh, uh, you know, it's currently trading at this price, okay? Currently trading at this price, 325. So if that market was to move back up and enter some of the green UFOs, that would be great. We got 51% if using um, a regular session data. If I use pre and post market, the 51 becomes 52. So 52% would be a better choice, okay? But unfortunately, the value that we would want to see for those UFOs is 354, which is the average, okay, while there is no red UFO all the way until 372. So, I mean, you can certainly enter somewhere in the middle uh, and cross your fingers, but obviously that would not be the way to do it. It would be too hopeful. And um, therefore, Netflix, even though it's a good candidate in a theory point of view, today is not giving us the UFOs in the place we need them. Okay, so we may need to wait a couple of more days for new ufos to form and then maybe you have new red ufos lining up with the average and then it would be the time to get in okay so lenar a corporation could be another good candidate abbv could be another good candidate and then we got ung which is an etf okay ung is an etf the natural gas etf which is another etf that we'll look at okay but just keep in mind a uh, 19 dollar okay so uh, ung is a pretty cheap etf and when you use options, okay, it's not too good to use very cheap markets um, <clears throat> because you need to use too many contracts. And that's the recipe for a lot of slippage, okay? And uh, and that's the never welcome, okay? So uh, back to directional long. Uh, while Trustation is downloading data. So let me see if uh, S Ali is not ready. What about STZ, Constellation Brands? And want to see the download scheduler. Yeah, so it's, it's still downloading data for, for those guys. Okay, still downloading data for those guys. So we're just going to have to wait. I don't know why it's going so slow today for the download. Yeah, it's really taking its time. So I'll just wait a little bit until the data is with us. Go back to STZ. I'll do the little trick. I don't know why, but when this happens, it's normally it helps to just hit delete on your keyboard to cancel the download, and then you just switch to a you just switch to a daily time frame. 
okay and then you just go back to the 55 in the time frame which is the one you want and magic magic the data is there i never understood why but this works so anyway uh, with pre and post market we got 44 percent for stz uh, with regular session we got 49 percent uh, normally we want this to be 50 or more especially for directional um, i think that you would agree with me if i'll take it as 50 okay because we are so close to 50 that you know just uh, discarding it would be a shame so uh, we'll go for it okay so what do we have we have uh, the moving average lining up at 199 less than one minute from now the market will open and since the prior close was up uh, i am we are likely to see this average to be a little higher around 200 and we happen to have ufos at 200 so uh, my friends we we do have a valid entry with stz and therefore we're gonna have to plan the trade accordingly we're gonna have to look at the earnings date for STZ, we're gonna have to look at the TTT, the time to target calculation. So let's do that. Okay, so market, go ahead, please open for us. Uh, so the market should should open. So I'm not sure why we see no price movement. Okay, so I guess it's just moving very slow because this is this is the current candle this is july 19. Hmm, interesting that is is really not moving yep exchange time zone and here is two is 200 262 and 200 to 60. i'm a little undecided i'm not very happy with what i see so i'm just gonna close trade station and restart it please bear with me i'll do this quickly okay and we can plan this trade properly because we do have a setup there for a trade to be executed okay so i'll do this one with stz and then we'll go back to qualcomm to do another optional trade i'm just kind of moving you back and forth a little bit here uh, just because i was trying to um, make my time work as efficient as possible right before the market opens so when the market open uh, i am ready to to execute those trades okay so I'm just restarting trade station. Give me a sec. Just give me one sec. Exactly. So trade station is restarting here right now. Okay, here we go. Okay, hey guys, give me a little feedback. You guys are very, very quiet. Is everything okay on your end? How was the trading week so far, guys? Um, I'd love to know if you guys want to share whether you have traded short term, long term. Uh, I would, I would really like to know. Thank you, Wojan. Good. So we got a, we got the stock here. Here we go. So now we got the update. Okay. So this thing is trading at two hundred three thirty three. Okay. Two hundred three thirty three. So uh, we have uh, we have the data we needed. Uh, CL took you for a slow and painful ride yesterday. Uh, would you mind to elaborate on that, Bojan? Uh, does it mean that, um, I mean, I understand that uh, the trade didn't end up satisfactory. Uh, you probably lost some money on it. But when you when you say slow and painful ride, what does it mean? It means that uh, it was not really moving towards your stop or, you know, uh, please elaborate on that. I would like to know better what you mean by that. So anyway, um, uh, let's plan the trade. Okay, so we have the average lining up with 199. Um, 199 we have it here again it's not ideal that the average is so low where the ufos are but also remember we said stocks are fragile there are external forces that impact the stock so so this is just a reference number this is not like when we do intraday trading with smp or nasdaq where we have to be very precise okay with stocks it's okay actually it's recommended to not to be that precise so you don't miss the trades okay so what we're gonna do is uh, first uh, with stz we're going to be looking at the earnings date okay and we have here october 3 we just had a like a month ago more or less a little less than a month ago we had the earnings report the next one is happening on october 3 okay so we got a we got 
time to go to reach our target. For our target, okay, we would want to use the auto UFOs, okay, to find the targets. We are looking for a red auto UFO, but that auto UFO should not be applied to a daily time frame. That auto UFO should be applied to a weekly time frame because we are dealing, okay, we are dealing with a, a confirmed and therefore strong market condition. So that UFO will be our target, and therefore that target uh, it's going to be uh, mm, 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 229.74. This is the final target. Okay, and uh, good news uh, is looking very far away, and like it happens many times, especially with stocks. Bad news probably is not going to be reachable from now until October 3. Okay, because going from 203 to 229, that's a 10% movement on the stock. I'm not saying it could not happen, and you will not see these things happen to you. You will. But at the same time, uh, it's not going to happen with every single stock, okay? Because it's a pretty, uh, let's call it a pretty nice move, okay? In in, in just uh, uh, like two months of time, okay? Or maybe close to three months of time. So um, so let's calculate then the TTT, okay? And probably you remember the rules for the TTT uh, from when we, we covered that lesson. And that's all recorded in the sharpening sessions, guys. So what you would do is look at the target, 229.74. You will take that number and uh, subtract the current price or, or the entry price, okay, which would be 201.73, which is your green UFO. That's $28. This is the amount of room for movement from current price to the target. And you will now take that number, okay, and I'm going to enable in the daily time frame. I need to enable uh, study. I'm going to enable average true range. Okay, so average true range, uh, let's make this to be uh, purple, and I'll make it a little thicker, here we go, so we see that better. So the average true range is currently pointing at 3.74, right, in a, in a daily basis, notice this is a daily ATR, so if I divide 28 by 3.74, and using the assumptions that we covered in in the in the sharpening lesson, so that would mean that you would expect seven weeks of time to pass to get to your target. So seven weeks of time times seven, because every every week got seven days. That means that you are shooting for 52 days to reach that target if everything works well. Okay, 52 days to reach the target if everything goes well. So that means that I'm gonna open the option chain for S. Uh, Z, uh, STZ, and I'm going to look for an uh, expiration date which is lining up with October 3 and never less than 52 days because the TTT is 52. Okay, that's the plan. Okay, so I'm just going to type STZ. Okay, reload the option chain for STZ um, in British English, STZ in American English. And that way we'll be able to see the available expiration dates, which for STZ are 91 days if we use October. Okay, 91 days if we use October. Gotta be careful because October 18, is after October 3, which means that we will need to exit this trade before October 3, even though we are using an expiration date that the, that goes until after. Okay? Uh, now, you could say, okay, what about we use August? August would be ideal. But what's the problem? August only provides 42 days to expiration, and we need a minimum of 52 this is what we have calculated when we did the TTT. Okay, so we cannot use August because it's less than 52. Therefore, we're going to have to use 18 of October 2018. Okay, so let me write it down on the chart so that way you can you can have it nicely written. Okay, so we're going to use expiration date would be will be um, October 18, 2018. Okay, keep in mind that the earnings date is on October 3, so you have to get out before that, okay? This is critical 
and is key that you remember this basic rule. Okay, so the trade to be executed, okay, the trade to be executed, let me bring th this text back into the picture. Okay, so the trade to be executed, okay, would be a bull call spread, okay, would be a bull call spread where the idea would be uh, to sell a call uh, above 229.74, which is the target, okay? So let's say we're gonna sell the 230, okay? And then we're gonna buy a call somewhere in between to get deltas around plus 30 okay that's the goal this is what we do okay so we'll buy a call below sell a call above that's a bull call spread and we'll do this using october 18 2019 so here is the expression date right click on the left side which is the call side side analyze by a vertical bull call spread or vertical strategies so when i do that i'm going to select 230 as the strike I will sell okay and for the one I buy okay uh, I will need to decide that in a minute by looking at the current price okay which is last looking at the Delta okay uh, but that's the Delta at the current price okay so that's not exactly the Delta I want to see what I want to see is what if that stock reaches 201.73, which is my entry point. So at 201.73, okay. So at 201.73, not at the current price, which is last, okay. At 201.73, what's my delta? And notice how the delta is 26.75. So I need more delta. So how do I get more delta? I need to lower my strike. What if I do 205? Well, now I got 35. Okay, so now I am meeting what I need. Ideally, I, I had 207 or something like that, but it doesn't exist. Okay, when you look at the option chain, it goes from 205 to 210. 207 does not exist. So what is the trade that we're going to build? It's a 205, 230 bull call spread. Okay, so I'm buying the 205 call and selling the 230. Okay, this is the trade that we're gonna put together. If you do this trade, this trade is a trade that will cost you $745. Okay, and therefore, if you do nothing, you could lose up to $745. So from a risk point of view, you need to evaluate if this trade is too big for you or it's okay. And if it's okay, how many contracts you wanna use? If you use one contract, then you have $745 of risk. If you use two contracts, you have more. To be honest, it's not 745, it's 688. Why? Because you don't buy the call now. This is now. Okay? You don't buy the call now. You will buy the call once the stock reaches 2173, and therefore the anticipated value for the for the bull call spread will be 688. Therefore, the risk will be 688. Okay? 684 now. So keep that in mind. Let's say you are okay with it, so you will want to place an order. So the way you would place the order is by click place order, as just I, I just did, okay? And you would make this to be market. You will click an activation rule, and the activation rule will be based on the price of STZ add, and you will want this to be equal or less than 201.73, okay? And now you will just click OK, and the moment you place order, you will get a confirmation wi window that tells you that you are about to buy a bull call spread made of the 205 and 230 call that expire in October. And you're going to buy it only if the price of the stock activation drops to equal or less than 201.73. Okay? And if you're satisfied with that, you just click yes. And as you can see now in my manage window, okay, I have a receive order I just sent. Okay? Uh, okay, it should show here in just a second. I don't know why it's not showing. 
okay well it's it will show in a minute okay it's a it's a simulated account and these things happen sometimes in the simulated accounts okay so uh, you know we will see the trade there uh, later on or, or whatever okay but the trade would be there if that was to be a real account waiting to get filled only if the stock was to fall to the entry price okay anyway so we have trade number one uh, with stz uh, i'm going to look at uh, qualcomm uh, to confirm if we do or we don't have a valid non-directional trade and then we'll, i will come back to directional to see if we can find any shorting opportunity as well okay in the meantime quick uh, quick look at the chat box version uh, you enter before the open so timing trade wasn't uh, triggered uh, you were up 240 then down minus 240 then up 140 and then finally open up and push down to my stop and kept going down was in the trade for two hours oh, i get it i get it i get it and you know and and the time stop has precisely the purpose of eliminating that problem even though the time stop will also eliminate some profits at times so uh, what you need to do it's to look at yourself in the mirror and get to understand how this impacted your psychology. Did it took you very much far away from your comfort zone or were you okay with it? And if you feel that that was very uncomfortable and that could even impact um, the, um, um, the, the way you plan the next trade, because now maybe you get a little upset, a little impatient, a little something, uh, then, then you must use a time stop to cool yourself down get out of the trade and replan after the fact instead of just get stuck with the roller coaster that you're just describing okay so uh, thanks for sharing bojan okay Th thank you very much for that and I'm, I'm sure that what i just said is nothing new but at the same time is hopefully helpful uh, for the group okay uh, so plan demand trader stz bull call spread is similar to your ibm bull call spread from the predictive session first may i close out two minutes ago for five hundred dollars thanks for sharing and you are right uh, and by the way all the trades should look similar, isn't it? Because we are following a set of rules. So, uh, yeah, so way to go. Uh, yeah. 140, is it? Yeah, very good. Yeah, I, 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 hear, I hear your comments. Yes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, because uh, supply and demand trade, your last comment, the lesson from this is to stay with this type of trade. Remember, stocks are impacted. Stocks are influenced by uh, multiple uh, other external forces, okay? And if you get out of the trade too soon, then uh, you miss on those profits, okay? And uh, therefore, uh, you know, uh, you, you just want to have a set of rules that allow you to go over the natural fluctuations that certain markets will provide. Uh, because this is you know how it is okay so it's, it's i was going to say it's quite interesting to be honest it's not quite interesting it's, it's quite bothering i should say that uh, i'm having problems to load my charts uh, because i am eager to do the trade with qualcomm and i'm not sure why i am having this very slow way on how TradeStation loads the charts today um so i know I know that uh, when TradeStation, when you log in TradeStation, I know TradeStation will be pinging multiple of their servers and basically connect to whatever server that provides the best uh, performance for downloads. So I am guessing that there may be some sort of a problem with servers located either in Asia or, or Europe, and I'm being connected to servers in the US, and therefore I am being experimenting a lot of latency uh, being located in Asia, okay, and um, this is the reason why I am having a little bit of a problem. Let me let me try to force something on my side. Just one sec. Okay. It's just funny, you know, loading a chart, um, uh, it's uh, it's really nothing magic. 
uh, loading a chart it's uh, it's not like streaming high definition video or anything like that it's just like just a little bit of data it's nothing nothing too intense but what what may hurt you at times uh, when you experience that your transition may go slow it's more the the latency problem uh, where you know the transition tries to download some data transition gets timeouts and try reattempt the download and reattempt the download with timeouts you know and that's that's what um, could hurt the plan of a specific trade okay so sorry the download of a specific chart so um, that's what's happening on my side as we speak okay so i'm gonna give it a try again to welcome and um, should be fine in the meantime i'm just gonna open the option chain I am telling you something is going on with the PlayStation servers in this side of the world today. Okay, we got the chart, but it took way longer than what it should be. Anyway, um, so um, we concluded with Qualcomm earlier that using regular um, uh, hours for the plotting of the UFOs or using pre and post market, both cases are just as good. This is what we concluded earlier. Okay, I guess you, you remember we got 54%. Uh, if we use the pre and post market, we got 55%. If we use the regular session, so it's it's kind of the same. Okay, it's kind of the same. Give me a second, guys, because I'm getting an, an error message here from the Option Station Pro, which again is timeouts messages. So something is going on. And uh, my, tr my my access to the Tristation network is it's uh, for whatever reason routing me to the furthest away servers, which are the ones located in the U.S., creating timeouts. Okay, and this is this is why I'm having this this problem here. But anyway, now it's loading, so we should be fine. Okay, so Qualcomm. Okay, patience, pay guys. Let's see if we got a nice trade. I mean, I loved the, the way the chart on Qualcomm looked like with a collection of green UFOs above and a collection of red, U, red UFOs above and green UFOs below, right? So we should be able to find, uh, let's call it an easy way to set up the trade uh, where we end up equal distance from all the UFOs and having multiple UFOs on our side should help the trade, okay? So, so let's see if we can do that. I believe we said with Qualcomm, we would need to use a uh, july 26 expiration date uh, the reason why was because of the earnings date which in the case of qualcomm is july 31st okay so we cannot use august 7 2nd because that would be beyond july 31st okay so therefore we're gonna have to stick with july 26 okay so when looking at july 26 okay if i click on analysis um let me go ahead and remove qualcomm here right click anywhere to analyze and sell any random iron condor just as i as i did before oh it didn't fully download here qualcomm okay now Please wait, we have it. So we got a July 26 expiration, okay? Uh, I don't care about the strikes right now, so we don't need to look at it. This simply gives me the opportunity to add plus and minus one uh, standard deviation, and therefore I know that from now until this date, it would be normal to stay between 72 to 78, okay? Something like that. So 72 to 78 brings me to, uh, well, 78 would put me up to 81, because there is no 78, and 72, is right here okay but uh, obviously with this collection of ufos probably would make sense to shoot for that 7147 so let me let me be a little more precise if i look at current price which is 75 and i measure from current price to here if i'm trying to look for something kind of equal distance this is actually putting me all the way to 67 if i want to be really equal distance which is interesting 
which is interesting mm, interesting so 75 to 67 yeah yeah that's correct I, I did it right so anyway so so then what we want to do is to look at a, a trade where we would expect Qualcomm to remain between 81 89 and 67.29 so the question is if I sell the 82 calls which I don't think they will exist it will be 82.5 do I get paid 25 or more oh actually we got 82 well actually no I only get three so this is very disappointing this is very very low premium for Qualcomm which normally is a little bit more spicy today has very very dry premium both on the put and the call side and and therefore uh, yeah you know what we cannot do uh, any iron condor on that stock uh, you know what what's happening is that let's face it market makers are not stupid and with so many ufos on top of each other markets market makers know that qualcomm is not likely to break any of that and therefore uh, the no price is really unlikely to go there and therefore there is very little premium built in uh, those options okay that's 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 the bottom line um let me go ahead and customize column i want to uh imply volatility um, yeah that's good here so imply volatility um yeah yeah so this is kind of like when we prove that the black shows model really doesn't reflect reality with 38 percent which is more than let's say 28 uh, and yes of course 45 is more than than two but given the real probability of getting to 67 with so many green ufos on top of each other uh, then that number should never be 38 it should be much less okay so but anyway so you know this is when those those numbers uh, are not so useful okay so yeah, so done with the non-directional trades. Okay, so non no non-directional trade for today. And therefore, we're going to be looking into uh, the um, non-directional trades beginning with uh, ABBB. Non -direction, uh, sorry, directional trades to the short side. Oh, it's still not loading. Okay, so I'll switch to LEN. Lenar Corporation to see if we got this already downloaded. Little more pending data waiting. UNG, that's a ETF. What else do we have on the to the long side? Okay, so I guess I'll I'll be patient. Let's go back to Len. Len is a $46 stock. Um, ABBV is on the 60s, 70s. Um, of course, when trading options, the higher the price of the stock, you, you start, at, a, you start at, an, at an advantage because the options give you a better leverage, if you wish. Wow, guys, um, not too happy that today we need so much waiting time for the downloads to happen. Again, I'll try the little trick. So, download, scheduler. I will kill those two guys. Do the trick, switch to the daily time frame, and then switch back to 55. And I got much more data, but I still got some more pending. So daily time frame for ABBV. Switch to 55. This one is ready. So yeah, so what do we have here? We got 44%. That would not be acceptable for a directional trade. What if we look at a pre and post market for ABBV? Uh, 
Remember, for directional trades, we have to be at 50 or more. For non-directional trades, you have seen at times being a little more relaxed. Bojan, I hear you, my friend. Um, I hear you were not mad or frustrated with the loss, but you were frustrated with the time and the capital being tied up. Okay, and somehow this may impact your 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 mindset and your emotions when when it comes to planning the next trade. This is what you need to assess. Okay, I, I know that um, you know you, you, you have understood. Uh, you know that collecting losses from time to time is part of trading, and it doesn't bother you. Okay, and that is a sign of a person. Uh, gaining a lot of maturity in the world of trading. Uh, but beyond that, uh, there are other things that may impact you from a mindset point of view uh, beyond the monetary loss, uh, which in this case is the frustration for the time. Okay, So just look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself the question, does this allow me to be objective in the next trade or is this impacting me too much? And if it does, use a time stop so you remove that. That's it. Yeah. So now the, the good thing is that you were following your plan. Okay. You were following your plan, and this is the way. This is what you should do. So that's perfect. What you need to do is tweak the plan for the plan to be 100% compatible with your men, with, with your psychology, in a way where there is no impact in the mindset that gets you less objective or gets you emotional for the next trade. That's the trick. Okay. That, the trick is to tw tweak the plan so the plan is you. Okay. Anyway, 47%, so notice that both with um, pre-market and post-market and regular session, we are not getting to the 50s, okay? And that, te that means that the way that stock is being traded by the large market players, those guys, they place the orders, and if they don't get filled, they cancel them. So it's either the amount of orders they place are very small, so they get filled fully, and there are no unfilled orders, or the amount of unfilled orders left is very small, or they cancel the orders. So we just saved a lot of losses thanks to looking at that, that probability metric. Okay, and that stock is not the best candidate to trade. And as you know, I strongly recommend avoiding trades on that stock because of that one, okay? So with LEN, we got 47% with uh, pre and post market. If we look at regular session, we got 53, so that's fine. Okay, this is fine. And uh, actually we have a trade in front of us, my friends. We have a trade because you have this red UFO at 47 something lining up with the average located at 47 something. Okay, so we have uh, the lineup that we need. So it's time to look at where the target would be. So I am enabling enabling auto UFOs. Uh, I am going to apply auto UFOs to the weekly time frame, and this show us a green UFO located at. 42.9 okay so 42.9 is where the target would be for LEN um, Lenar Corporation that's where the target would be so I am now disabling auto UFOs going back to the daily okay and everything is back to normal here okay but I know what's my target which is 42.90 current price is 46 entry will be 47 okay so what are we gonna do here well, first, we will load and see what is the earnings date. Okay, and I'm just noticing we are at the top of the hour, so I will finalize this trade and we will call it the day. Similar setup as before, October 2nd is the uh, uh, earnings date, so that would be a, a good date to remember. And certainly we are shooting for that expiration date. Uh, we need a calculator here to calculate the TTT, so calculator. Uh, entry would be 47.38 uh, as you can see the value for the red UFO the target would be 42.90 which is the green UFO that we found on the weekly time frame a, a minute ago so we are talking about four dollars and 48 cents of uh, potential for movement uh, and this with an ATR average true range of one second So the average true range is, oh yeah, I never saved it earlier, so I'm gonna have to redo what I did so you can get a better color 
uh, when it comes to um, showing the values. So 1.0414. So if I take that number and I divide it by 1.0414, that means that we are shooting for four weeks for us to get to the target times seven that would be 30 days so we need we need a minimum of 30 days but we also need to make sure that our uh, expiration date it's lining up as close as possible with october 2nd to benefit from the increase of value of the options inflating going into earnings so what we're going to do is um load len to see what are the available see what are the available uh, expiration dates so uh, we got a little bit of a problem here okay we will need to use november 15 uh, that would be the one to use that's the only one we could use okay and i'm not gonna say it's wrong i'm just saying that because it's 119 days which is way more than what we need which is 30 okay and i cannot use august you may say oh 28 is very close to 30 yeah but we need to be we need to use an expiration date which lines up or is after earnings even though we will exit prior to earnings but the expiration date needs to be at or after earnings okay and uh, august 19 is certainly not so we're gonna use to we're gonna have to use november not a big deal using november but the problem is that because it's 119 days from now we will have to pay more because the more time the more the more premium which is a normal thing in trade in trading right so anyway i'm gonna right click to analyze and buy a vertical that is the expression date to be used 15 november 2018 let me write it down on the chart okay so we're gonna be using a uh, expiration date will be uh, november 15 2018 earnings are on october 2nd so get out prior to that date okay so that's something to keep in mind it needs to be crystal clear in your mind now when it comes to putting the trade together we're gonna do a bear put spread okay so a bear put spread it's done by uh, buying a put somewhere around here and sell a put sell a put below 4290 which is the target okay so what i would like to do is if that's available i would like to sell the 42 put and then the put i will buy okay buy a put that gives us at least negative 30 deltas okay now notice the deltas need to be negative because this is a bearish trade not a bullish so bearish means negative, bullish means positive. Okay, so let's see what we got. So do I have the 42? I have the 42.5, which is good, which is at or below the 42.9. So I'm going to be fine with that one. Now, my entry is 47.38. It's our red UFO. So 47, 38 is a number I want to input here because I want to see what's my delta, okay? So my delta, okay, it's 40, uh, it's 2279. So what can I do? I can bring my put up. I go to 50, now I got 35. And in one hand, you would say that's fine. But the problem is that 50, it's up here which is way above my entry, okay? And if you remember the lesson, we said we want the put to be a little below your entry. We want the put a little below. So in other words, I want the 47.5, right? Or even more ideally, I would want the 45. Now the problem is that my target is 42. So basically if I buy the 45, I am almost buying the put where the target is, okay? so. In this case, because I got $2.5 at a time, and this is a low price stock, which is 40 bucks, okay? So I will go for this 47.5. And since I am not getting my delta with the 47.5, with, with the, with the what I'll do is I will not touch this one. And what I will do is I will move the 42.5 down 
240 and now magic I got my delta okay so I'm just doing a little bit of adjustment to get the delta I need so in other words we are buying the 47.5 pulled and we are selling the 40 put this is your bear put spread using November 15 expiration that's how you do it okay so now that this is explained to you the only thing left if you are happy with this trade and, and, and remember by the way uh, I am giving you a long and a short trade uh, entering one or two of them depends on what you need in your portfolio okay maybe you have many trades in your portfolio that long and you want to use this short as an offset so if the market falls you will lose on the longs but you will make some money on the short or vice versa okay so uh, you know you need to decide which are the trades that you want to execute out of the ones i'm giving you today depending on what you already have in your portfolio keep that in mind okay so we will need to conduct sessions by the way on portfolio definition okay which we haven't done that yet so if you're happy with this trade and you want to take it so the the the, the action will be to click trade and once you have the trade ready to be executed here change this to market click on activation rule click on the activation rule button to set a price based on len and you will want the condition to be 47.38 or above right so if len goes uh, above or equal to 47.38 okay so what you are doing is that you are buying the bear put spread made of buying the 47.5 put and selling the 40 put right uh, but that's not going to be done unless I just used the wrong drawing here sorry for that unless LEN reaches that 47.38 mark okay so you now click yes and now the order is in the system and if I go to manage okay I should be able to see my orders the one I had earlier with STZ and the one I just had now with LEN okay and those are the orders in my system and the trades are uh, waiting to get filled and that's it okay so this will take us to the end of the session today um i'm looking at comments on the comments box i don't see anything new so i'm guessing that you guys are following and you are fine um again uh, excited to meet you again over the weekend good job with uh, everything that you guys are doing um few questions uh, make me feel that you guys were following well that makes me happy okay if that was not the case and you were just uh, silent just to not to slow down the group uh, but you do have questions just make sure you send us an email and i'll take care of it uh, and and therefore uh, you will get your answer so you can you can follow better in future sessions okay and this applies to you if you're watching live but also if you're watching this recorded okay so uh, have a good weekend everybody uh, keep out the good work as i said and i will see you uh, over the weekend for the sharpening session uh, let me show that quickly in the calendar for you guys so tradewithufo.com this is our website as you i'm sure you know get together this is the button that drive, drives you to the place where you have the calendar here's the calendar uh, so um sunday 9 a.m eastern time time for sharpening and that's on the 21st okay so see you in a couple of days okay tomorrow is saturday so we, we have a break but see you again on sunday for sharpening purposes and we will have very soon uploaded the august calendar i want to take advantage before we, fi we finish today's session to mention a special session that we will run on uh, august 8 it's going to be a special session to talk about trading psychology we'll have a very very special guest i am sure he has a smile on his face as we speak uh, very excited for that session guys and uh, again looking forward to see you on sunday take care everyone see you soon bye bye everyone